welcome back everybody this is Jason Seekers we're gonna go through a fun little dinosaur cartoon uh, this tutorial is gonna be specifically for comic strips and inking with the Wacom tablet uh, so I do have all the resources that you're gonna need in the bottom or in the descriptions so just kind of download those and you can just follow directly along if this is the first time viewing our channel first of all welcome uh, and then we do go a little bit slower and that's so you can just minimize our screen uh, I'll follow directly along so we kind of go pacing through I don't speed art through it I don't put sound over it so it goes a little bit slower so you can actually follow along and by the time you're done you have a cool little dinosaur cartoon so first thing that I did just so you guys can see I did a file new I did width 7 height 5 we have horizontal format next I'll just do a new one just so you can kind of see we did file place you're going to need to download the diet, Dino Diet image. Hold Shift. I'm holding Alt Option as well, just so it's pulling from the center here. Transparency, I actually dropped that down to around 20. And I also made that a template layer. Okay, so that's what I did. I'm just going to delete that because I already have it. Okay, let's move into the fun. So the first thing we're going to do, we are going to be using the Wacom tablet today. So the first thing I want you to do is just double click on your brush settings. I have 4 and 20% for smoothness. You can completely modify those just depending on your own personal preferences. The 20% is a little bit high, so just really depending on uh, how, if you, how new you are or how kind of uh, choppy you want your lines to be. That would be kind of a good little thing to be playing around with. And then let's start creating some brushes. So what I'm going to do is go new brush. We can do the first option. I have this one I believe is already a 9. So I want to drop this down to 5. And I want pressure. And I want variation. We're going to pull that all the way up. Now whenever you're building brushes, pressure is just so you can use the Wacom by the way. But the variation, you can completely modify this. So depending on how... Uh, hard or how light you can push you can obviously modify that to uh, to your own preference there are some other videos on the Wacom channel that can actually um, you can modify the settings on the tablet itself and the, the pen itself so you can go hard soft and then it'll actually modify to how pressure sensitive your tablet actually is all right so that's a five let's do a three new brush And this is just for all of our details, pressure, and then variation. And then we're ready to go. Okay, so let's just test this out first. Now for these, these guys, I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And we'll kind of do the outside first, and then we're going to come back and do all of our hatching. So I want to just kind of see if we have a good outside line and I'm just going to test this out. Okay. That is not giving us any variation. I want... Pressure, pressure. Good. And what I'm testing out is just thin to thick. Will that be a good... Outside line. Okay, looks good. So just so everyone is aware, this one is a nine point pressure variation of nine. So that is what we are looking at. So let's just zoom in. We'll finish this first guy first. Now I would say, just size wise, I can. So this is just me moving my fingers. This would be me moving my wrist. All right, so if I am learning how to use the Wacom, I still say try and draw in the size that you normally would on a piece of paper. And usually if I'm telling my students the size of a grapefruit is kind of still where you're going to be able to just use your finger. So I think that's a little bit easier to learn with than trying to draw super big. So if this is super zoomed in, it just becomes a little bit more cumbersome. And then we're just going to start the process. Now anytime, and this is just... Going back to the basics, anytime we're out in the middle, 
or if a line seems like it's floating, then we are going to want a nice tapered line. And as lines merge together, we're going to want it to thicken up. Now I am going to modify this cartoon quite a bit, so we're not, and I'll actually walk you through it by the way. But in case you guys didn't see the uh, date on this one, this one is from 2002. So we're going to update some of the drawings at this point. Good. No, I am on bl the uh, brush. Shift B. So whenever we start filling in, we're going to fill in with the blob brush. So I just did Shift B. You're going to notice that the blob brush is selected. And if I ever go, oops, I can always go come back, Shift E, and clean that up. Shift B. Good. Go back to B. Push it nice and hard. Lightening it up. Now we are going to come back and do quite a bit of cross hatching on this one. But I just want to kind of get going on the lines. So depending on your personal preference on hatching, not cross hatching, we can kind of modify. So come back up. So all we're really focusing on right now, and I might zoom in for eyeballs here, what we're focusing on is thick and thin. And depending on how many times you've done the Wacom, this is going to be friendly or not friendly. And keep in mind if it goes thick, thin, like this, and it's got a little bit of variation, I personally like it. You guys can kind of pick and choose. And that's going to just be your own little personal preference right there. All right, and I want some little wrinkles coming over here. Now, at any point, if you said, hey, this is the eyeball, I want to just use the ellipse tool, you'd totally be able to do that. So just remember that we are still in Illustrator. So just because we're using the, the tablet doesn't mean that's the only thing you get to use. Let's pop up here. I see that quite a bit with the, the students where they're trying to do all the stuff that we typically do with the mouse. Now they're trying to do with just the, the tablets. That becomes a much bigger pain. Okay, let's do some little hatching coming through here. Let's just zoom out so I don't lose focus here. Let's just do that. Shift B. So my left hand, just so everyone is kind of aware of where my hands are and what my settings are. Right now, my, I'm a righty, so my tablet, all the little buttons on the right hand side. I think I have an Intuos. It's an old Intuos, by the way. All the settings on that right hand side are completely disabled just so I don't keep pushing them. All right, good, good, good. Let's just keep cranking around. And what we're focusing on is just thick, thin, as it comes back in the middle here, nice and thin. Other little things just be aware of as well as I try and get that line back overlapping the existing line. just so we don't have weird gaps like that. Good. And I'm not necessarily going to pick up the pace, but all we're going to do is trace, and I'm worrying about thick, thin. I'm worrying about line variation. So if you wanted to modify that smoothness setting, that would be kind of a reason for it unless you like what I just did and this will keep it nice and smooth especially with long lines and then I'll smooth it out for you nice 
nice and thin through here. So this is getting, I'm going to zoom out. So we're actually moving into, instead of where your fingers are moving, now it's actually getting to a larger movement. And that's where I think my hand starts sticking. I don't have a glove or anything goofy. Come on down. Good. Now, whenever we zoom out like this, just pay attention to thickness, pressure. I think a lot of this will come back and, and add on later, but I think just getting those outside lines down. This is a much easier process. Good. I want a little bit more of a wrist. Nice and smooth. Let's go shift B. This is all just going to be silhouetted out. And if you ever needed to adjust the size of your blob brush, it's just the bracket keys that's next to the, your P key. So it'll go O, P, and then you'll see your brackets. Go back to brush. Now in the, the last video where we were doing our bears, I kind of gave you guys a little bit of a homework assignment. And that was just kind of start seeing what cartoons or comic strip artists that you like so you can start paying attention to their brushwork. So thick, thin, are they using hatches or hatching? How thick their brushwork is? Especially in hatching, you can kind of start seeing some of them have real fat brushes or calligraphy pens. Others have, um, are using like paint brushes. So Bill Watterson, that would be a paintbrush. So it's really, really fat. It's kind of got broken edges. Mike Peters, he's got some pretty fat lines as well. Non sequitur, he would have a very fine cross hatching line. So it just kind of depends on what you're, what you're going for. And what that would do is all that would really mean is depending on the size, then you would just switch that up. So if I wanted something finer, instead of how fat this is, I would just kind of sh shrink it up and or not use as much variation on it. Okay. Dino one, done. Let's do Dino two. And you guys might see me modify this guy a tiny bit more. But for right now, we'll just kind of ink them up. And if I ever change it, I usually try and put the, that in the description as well. Or if I find any other little helpful hints as I'm going through that I do after the fact, especially when I'm uh, cleaning up, I usually put that in the description as well. Okay, I want this to pop out a little bit more. Work on our thick thin. Loop. Let's do this eyeball. 
Little loop, shift B. And I might come back through, clean these up. Now you can go shift E. Let's just shrink down those brackets. And I'm just gonna push. Control. Oh, it's hitting the stroke. That's what's happening. All right, we won't do it that way. Brush, shift B, let's do the nostrils. Back to the brush. I'm gonna establish a little bit more of a lip on this. Come down, come down. This is gonna swoop over. That one's gonna swoop over. Good, shift B. Remember, if you do any of the little overages, you can either go Control Z, do it again, or you can just come back with the eraser tool and just erase it. So, either one of those would work out just fine. Crank, crank, crank. Fill, fill, fill. Do our brackets. Good. Just hit this guy right there. I want his back to be pretty bumpy. So that's why I'm going to do smaller little lines. And if you wanted big scales, anything fancy, go research some dinosaurs and have some fun. My 22-year-old self did not research dinosaurs to draw this. That is my point. All right, let's do his feet. We're just cranking along here. Good. Notice I zoomed out a tiny bit more. Let's just do back through here. That's his back leg. through. And the more you do this, this feels pretty, pretty natural just drawing at this point. So that just the more you do it, the better. Uh, my tablet, just so everyone is aware, I do not have a big fancy, fancy screen. I'm sure there's a word for it. I am blanking on Wacom screen terminology at the moment. So this is an old one, so it's a little bit more of a blind contour where I'm not I'm staring at the screen and not my hand. So that does takes a little bit of time getting used to. So be aware of that. Okay, I think these are fingers. Let's let's assume they're fingers. Shift B. back to B. I think I want both of these to be silhouetted. Shift B, back to the blob brush. My hand is still, my left hand is still hanging out over by Shift Alt. Direct selection tool is over there. So the A key, the V key, all my shortcuts are typically over there. My thumb is hanging out over the space bar. Okay. Let's 
Good. Bunny, you're not going to have a good day. Okay, brush. Nice and light, nice and light. So these light ones, if you're having trouble with those, then just come back up, change the brush size. So right now, notice that I've, I haven't changed the size of the brush at all. I'm just changing my pressure as I'm pushing. Let's just do a little guys there. Give him an eyebrow, eyebrow, back of the head here. I'm going to totally modify his ears. Just give him a little bit, a little bit more of an ear. It's going to come back, and I think this one, I'm going to do this one as a silhouette. Let's just give him a little ear right there. Good. Shift B. Little silhouette ear. Now, for the most part, this guy's gonna. These are gonna stay black and white, so we don't have to worry about a whole lot. And we're gonna get most of our value in the next little phase as we do our hatching. But I want him to be furry, so I'm going to do a lot of broken lines. So anytime you do kind of fur, try and avoid longer strokes. And that'll give you a little bit more of a fur look. Back leg is pretty well silhouetted out. Shift B. And if you guys use the brush, a lot of times you'll just forget to do the shift B. So just kind of pay attention to it. It's not, it's not going to kill anything. It's just major difference is if I select that this is now a shape rather than a bunch of strokes. Let's do his thigh. Do a bunny belly. So this guy was actually drawn on paper, and and then so this original is inked. So you can kind of see that the limitations of detail. I'm pretty sure this was not a large format piece of paper. So you can kind of see that the drawing kind of suffers, especially as you start getting into smaller areas okay you've got a bunny we've got some dinosaurs so this is our foreground so what I want to do let's just save check file save okay so now since this is on its own layer we could really approach the second layer on the same one so it's going to be hatching so we're going to start adding in all of our details we're going to really come back in uh, and start modifying uh, a lot more of the values. So the first thing I want to do is right now we are on kind of a fatter pen. Let's just switch over to, I think this one's going to be our five. Now if you want to keep it the same, feel free, but we're going to get into a lot more uh, fine areas and just let's just zoom out just so you can kind of see. This will probably be the original size when we're done with it. So just kind of pay attention to that. Uh, we'll, we'll really add in a lot more black. So underneath, that's going to be blob brush, but we're going to be going crazy with our hatching so since I might want it this on its own layer just so I can modify it or if I don't like it let is just do a new layer 
that is fine. And I'm just going to drop it below. And let's just lock out our linking layer. So my template layer is locked out. My inking layer is locked out. And for hatching, let's just start with our foreground dinosaur. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. I think for the hatching element, it's a lot easier. Eh, right there. That should work out. So again, I'm on 5. Let's go back to the brush. And now what we're looking for is I'm going to push pretty lightly. And what we're looking to do is just add in a couple different things. I'm looking for texture. I'm looking for values. And I'm also looking to start kind of getting in a little bit more of the, the scale side. Or scales. So it's just going to be the side of the nose. And for the as best as I can, I'm gonna try and avoid cross hatching. And I totally shouldn't have said that because I will more than likely get it at some point. Now, as I'm approaching the the, the fatter lines, I'm pushing harder. So nice and light, get a little bit fatter. And I'm focusing on anything I. So here are the two things that you're thinking about is I'm thinking of what form am I trying to kind of elaborate on and then I'm also trying to think of where the values are so there's kind of those two things that we're we're kind of paying attention to so I'm focusing on the value underneath the nostril but at the same point I'm also looking to add in a little bit more direction on the upper lip here I'll just be a little crease coming through Good, good, good. Let's do a little bit more on the back of the head here. Okay. Let's just do back of the cheek here. So nice and light, and now I'm pushing hard. Nice and light, pushing hard. And if see all these little variations? I like them. I think it makes it look less digital, which is kind of funny that we're doing this digitally, but the, uh, the more you do digitally, the more people will be like, oh, the, you'll get a weird comment on if you're doing it digitally. So just pay attention to that. A lot of people will think inking on the computer, the computer does the inking for you, which is humorous. Humorous and insulting, I guess, at the same time. Okay. So this is going to kind of focus on that rounded. And I'm just going to be coming in. Good. I'm going to do a little squigglies. This is just going to be little belly lines. And what that's also going to do is, like if I was an alligator, I'd have some. Or if I was drawing an alligator. I am not an alligator. Okay. Good. Let's do some on the back of the leg here. And even though we're zoomed in, I'm still just using my fingertips. Especially with hatching, I think that's really not an easy thing to do since we're dealing with pressure to do with your wrists. I think that is not an easy thing to do at all. Okay, okay, okay. Shift B. I want a good chunk of that to be black through there. I want most of this to be black. So if you know there's going to be larger areas of black, just come in and fill that in. Go back to the brush. And 
Now I can kind of just come back through and thicken that up. That would be the continuation the continuation of the belly. Would that be that line? All right, let's just do some little guys here. You can leave those out. You can also change the pattern. And at the end of this, and this is kind of the uh, a kind of a good rule of thumb when it comes to hatching, is we're just gonna keep adding it in. Keep in mind we can always delete all of this. It's on its own layer. Be aware. So I can always come in and be like, nope, don't like that, and then I can just delete. So that is a very easy option. And the other good little thing to do is every so often just zoom out and just see how your values are reading, or if there's any other areas that you would want. I'm going to go shift B. So I want some darker values coming through here. Change the bracket size. So while we go back and forth, it's just one, just see how it's reading. And then you can really kind of see if you need any other lines, if things are standing out. Let's go shift B. I'm going to want most of that leg pretty dark. Good. Back to brush. Do some little squiggles. Now, whenever notice that would be a good little area if you are doing the uh, smoothness. So that little this smoothness does not like squiggle lines, as you can tell. Come back through, come back through. Now, if you're ever doing the hatching, you say, "Hey, I still want it smaller." I th we're on a uh, five point right now. You could totally come back through and do. If you think three is easier to do, go three. Good, good, good. You're crushing it, guys. Maybe a little bit more here. So you can go crazy with the texture. You can go nice and easy. So it's kind of just personal preference. I'm adding just more detail. And you might actually see a crazy amount of more detail. So I'm kind of rushing just so you don't have to have a four-hour tutorial on cross-hatching here. But if you're really going to be building up the hatching, that does take some time. So just kind of be aware of building up the values, especially with the, uh, especially with thinner, if you have a smaller brush. Okay, let's just crank through some of these little, little marks. And I'm pretty zoomed out, by the way. So if you wanted to zoom back in... This is just some little textures. Dun, 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 dun. It's going to get me a little more here. I'm pushing very lightly right now. So same thing, side of the nose, we're going to do that on both sides. I'm barely pushing right now. So if this is getting tricky, either zoom in or you can uh, change the brush size. I'm 
Okay. Good. Alright, bunny. I'm not going to go too crazy with hatching over here. I'm just going to add a little bit more. A little more here and there. Okay, zoom out. Let's do shift B. Let's do some shadows here. Now I'm gonna do solid ones. You can completely, you could use some of the other techniques if you wanted to be transparent or use a gradient here. This will also just go back to your kind of, kind of comic style. What I also like is it just adds more black to the drawing too. Most of the hatching that we're going to do, or not hatching, but the values that we're going to add in the background are going to be gray tone, specifically a half tone. So I want to add as much black as possible kind of right now. All right, let's kind of just extend that guy out. It's nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. So notice I'm doing the outside first. Also pay attention that I am using blob brush. You could also do, if you like the brush better, you could do the brush for that. Okay, getting a little bit fatter just so I can fill this in. do all right so basically at this point we're pretty well done now we're just looking to if I'm looking for black areas to add I'm basically looking for depth areas as well so if I want to kind of pop anything back out that's what I'm looking for so I want that I also think I want right behind I want this area a little bit darker So I'm going to do brush. What I'm looking to do is pretty much this area. This is on this dinosaur, by the way. I'm going to basically try and get kind of just some hatching. Miss those. Sometimes when you go too light, it doesn't pick it up. Okay, good, good, good. Save check. Drink some coffee. Or whatever you guys drink. Monsters. So, little things. Through here, we could add a little bit more value. Um, but for the sake of time, I say we're probably pretty good to go with at least our, our foreground stuff. So a couple different ways you guys can uh, approach this. So I'm going to just lock out. Again, this is our value layer. Now when we're doing our background, I'm going to do it in, oh, I think I'll do some foreground. I'm going to do the background trees in the, uh, the volcano areas. Those won't have, you're going to see all this hatching. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just basically going to do the line work. We're gonna come back in with the blob brush to start establishing some values. We'll also establish some gradients, and then we're gonna probably bring it over into to Photoshop. So that's 
those are the next steps, at least in my mind. So I'm just going to say four. Four ground on this one. Everything else is locked out, by the way. I am going to come back to our FETs. And I'm just kind of focusing on... Ooh, I might even fan that up even more. What do we have? 11? Ooh, let's go 11. So I'm just kind of focusing on, this is going to be pretty loose, by the way. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to kind of focus on, eh, get some little flowery, grassy textures coming through. So you guys can notice I'm pretty loose. I'm also going pretty fast here. And then I want this to kind of come on out. And I'm just going to kind of focus on... So notice how that direction, that's what I'm going to kind of focus on when we're just adding a tiny bit of grassy textures here. Not going to be nearly as much. Maybe just a little bit kind of through here. Just adding a tiny bit more value to a few little things here and there. Okay, good to go. Lock it out. Now for the next layer, this is gonna be our background. It's not going to matter as much, but just so you can kind of start thinking back in space. Keep in mind this could all, since it's all still the inking, you could have it on the inking. Like these could all, everything could have been on the inking layer. I just like having more control over, you know, just the foreground if I want to modify that or if I'm going to color just that. I like having a little bit more control. Okay, brush. Come on, these are all still in the same layer. Or different layers, sorry. Okay, good. Let's just zoom in. Let's do a few little little palm trees. bit of texture through these but no okay trying to keep him a little bit rocky good So now I'm just going to add a tiny bit of little mountain lines. That was lines, not lions. Good, good. Tiny bit, tiny bit. All 
right. Save, save, save. Let's grab our rectangle. I'm going to move this up. You can worry about as fat as you want. Let's do... Okay. Okay, I'm putting it down. Let's go type. Text tool. Let's pop that up. I'm going to start. Ooh, even bigger than that. Okay. I've got all caps. That, that up, type fonts, and I am going to use cartoon regular. And I'll leave in the description, I'll give you the uh, resource file. I did find that on defont.com, by the way. I'm not going to have it as big as the other one. Now, the rule of thumb is as long as you could read it, you should be okay. Uh, 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 okay, save check. Now I'm going to add... Alright, let's do this. Let's do a new layer. Now you can... Let's just focus on which ones we have. So that's the background... That's not anything. Now, I still have some lines to do, things like that. So you'll see a lot of value and things happening in the background. But the next little step here, and I think we're going to do it this way. I'm just trying to think of what easy version we can do for you guys. All right, so this is going to be value. And this is going to move into our halftone. All right, so this is going to be where it starts moving into almost getting printed like a old-timey comic. So what we're going to be focusing on is we're going to have some gradients back here. And a lot of this is just going to be established with the, the blob brush and some really, really simple tones. So let's do value here. I'm going to go blob brush. Let's just start with our lightest gray first. And I'm going to basically just start thinking of what's closer and I'm going to start working in and getting my, my blacks established and my, my grays. More than likely, I will not get all the way over to black. But we're just kind of getting major shapes down. And then we're going to come back in with our gradient tool. So I can get that way up. So now that I'm filling in, we don't want to take this too long. Some little holes and gaps and things like that. You could definitely come in and, and clean those up. So all we're doing is basically doing a coloring a book right at this point in time. Eyedropper. So if you see any of these before our next step, all we're doing is filling in any of the little holes. And also just be aware that we are going to be doing a half tone on this. So even if you do have little bumps and blips and things like that, it's not going to matter as much. Just because all this stuff is going to turn into dots at a certain point. So... It's not going to actually look solid anymore anyway. Okay. Uh, let's... I say we're looking pretty good. Alright. So, a couple things. Let's add on, and I'm just going to hide this one at this point in time. So we have our values. We have our different layers. And what we're able to do now is anything that is in the same plain. So let's say this guy. I want to right click. Let's group those. Oh, let's group all those. What we're looking for is that it's a big solid mass. That's what we're really looking for. Um, let's
to do this. I'm going to go Shift B, Control Z, and just click off. I want to make sure that this one I can still, still grab. Shift B, and I'm going to color this one. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if we can go lighter. Let's just go white for it. Now notice that I'm doing white. I could even color this one hot pink. And the idea is just so I can grab it. It's really it's the one that there is a shape established. And so when I move on to my gradients here, I can grab it. So that's really the, the key. So you could color these whatever you want. Doesn't necessarily matter. It's all gonna turn into black at a certain point. There, that's there. I can separate that. So notice I can grab each thing separately. Hold down shift. So anything that's ground Let's group that too. Okay, group. I'm going to just add all those together. That's all together. Let's just do that. Okay. I'm going to make that a compound path. I think that's probably going to be the only one I need. Okay, let's have some fun. The, uh, I just put down my pen, by the way. You do not necessarily need it. So on this one, now we're gonna basically, on the, keep in mind, we were establishing our values. Now we're gonna come back, and we're just gonna kinda add some gradients on, onto where, where we want. So I want this one to be still pretty light. Good, let's come over to our gradient tool. And I want that the opposite way. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna do a gradient on this one and on maybe on a couple of these, just so you guys can see it. Pretty dark. Let's go pretty dark here. Now on some of the other tutorials, just so you guys are aware, uh, we do transparent gradients. You're gonna notice that we did not do that on this one. Okay, that one's too dark. So what I'm, I'm looking for is that it's still dark, but I don't want to lose any of the hands or anything like that. Okay, good. Want this one to be pretty light over here. And it could go pretty d dark. So in this far corner, we can go pretty dark with it. Okay, let's just pull it back that direction. I want it to be dark in that corner. As long as it, that edge pops out, I'm okay. All right, good. Let's do. Yeah, let's do this. Why not? Why not? Let's go white. This could just be a subtle, subtle gray. Okay, good. Save check. All right. So at this point, we are going to be bringing these over into Photoshop. So I'm just gonna get out of here. Let's go into Photoshop. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna bring over, we're gonna bring it over in chunks. So I want, I just wanna see where everything is. So that's there. So that, okay. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna want all of these together. So we just got rid of this one. Select everything. This is all gonna flatten as soon as we bring it over, by the way. All right, so all we're really looking to do is create a half tone with our gray background. So that's really the only thing we're looking to do. So this is what we're gonna do. This is our gray. So I'm gonna select our gray. I'm gonna go edit. Copy. This is what we're going to flip over. We're going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to go File, New. Since I've already copied it, it's going to automatically give me 
uh, kind of the pixel size. And what we're looking to do is go 72 for the resolution. So we want it very small. Control paste. I want it to be a smart object. And the first thing I'm going to, think I'm going to do, double click, right click, and we are going to rasterize it since we're going to be applying a filter to it. Now we're going to come up to filter. We're going to drop down to filter gallery. And yours might look a little bit different. And what we're looking for is under the sketch, we're looking for halftone pattern. And we want, and this is going to be totally personal preference, but I want a pretty chunky dot. I'm going to zoom out just so we can see it. We're just looking for kind of our halftone. All right. I say that looks good. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. It's going to give us our halftone. Now, with the layer still selected, we're going to drop down. We're going to come up to Threshold. And we are going to drag that over until we start getting our halftone pattern. Now, I'm going to say, and this is going to be personal preference as well. It could go all the way over. I'm just looking for kind of a subtle little guy. And I'm going to, this is what I would totally clean up. I think that's on a different layer. It's bothering me enough. All right, but for the sake of argument, I say that looks good. So let's just go File, Save As. And let's just go Dino Halftone. And let's save that as a JPEG for right now. Save. Hit OK. OK, so this is just the Halftone. So I could do a couple different things. So let's just say File Place. Let's give you a new layer so we can do it. I want this pretty much on the bottom, by the way. So File Place. So what we are looking for is our Dino Halftone. I'm going to place. And it should be pretty chunky, by the way. That's kind of the idea. And I'm just save, save, save. Move that down. OK. So that does bother me enough. But I say for the sake of argument, for the demo, I say save check, guys. File save. OK. So at this point, why we did the the just so you can kind of go through and kind of see what's going on. I could expand this and I could be able to do live trace on the background if I really wanted to. I'm not going to be uh, focusing too much on that on this demo. But just major little concepts here is we took over this grayscale. We had a very chunky pixel. Could even drop down to 50 if you wanted to be even a, a, a chunkier dot. We did our halftone pattern. Now keep in mind there's also color halftone and that's not what we were looking for. Uh, so we wanted to just do that, and then we up the, the threshold. And what that threshold does is make all of our dots actually black. So if we were going to print this out, everything would be black rather than a grayscale. But we still have all of our vector above. So the halftone can still be kind of chunky. Uh, that's kind of the, the, the look. And then I would still say, all right, let's go file, save for web. You can totally modify these up, by the way. But you can kind of see that this is a pretty chunky in the background, but our vector lines are still nice. And then I would go save. Ink and tutorial, save. And we got our cartoon, guys. So at this point, uh, hopefully you guys like the videos. If you guys do want to see more, make sure you guys are subscribed and make sure you guys are liking. Uh, if you have any questions going through it or any comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. I do try and read those every day. Uh, I, anyone that's given me positive feedback, I always read those and makes my day, so thank you very much. Uh, but at this point, we've got a ton more uh, in Illustrator. We've got a whole lot of cartoon tutorials to go through as well. Uh, so if you have any recommendations or anything that you would like to see, make sure you put that in there. But thanks for hanging out, and I uh, hope your little dinosaur cartoon turned out nice.